I think it's fairly safe to say that anyone who knows anything about gaming has heard of the likes of Skyrim, The Elder Scrolls, and the Fallout franchises. And if you haven't, what rock have you been living under? Skyrim has literally been re-released seven times over 10 different platforms over a 10 plus year period. All jokes aside, when Bethesda announced the release of Starfield, I'm fairly confident in saying that many of us had high hopes and there were some big promises made. But today, I'm going to be breaking down all things Starfield and whether or not I think it warrants the £60 price tag. My name is Big Winter and let's dive right in. There is quite a lot to look at when it comes to Starfield, so I'm going to break it down into five main categories. First up is gameplay and mechanics. Bethesda are fairly well known for creating inventive games full of customization thanks to their skill trees and skill point allocations. In this section, I'll be avoiding story, combat, and RPG specific elements and focusing more on the mechanical aspects of the game. To be honest with you, I've never been particularly blown away with Bethesda's approach to things like character movement and their fluidity. I've always found their games to be oddly clunky, and for that reason alone, I may be one of the few gamers out there that didn't particularly mesh well with the Fallout franchise. Skyrim was similarly clunky, but it was a game released all the way back in 2011, so it's forgiven and was fairly typical for the time. Starfield though doesn't really have that excuse. Despite being released more than 10 years later than Skyrim, it feels only marginally less clunky. That's not to say that it feels awful, but when compared to games of this era, it's a little disappointing, and everything feels like it has its own slight startup animation leading to a start-stop feel and don't even get me started on ladders. I also cannot stand the O2 system and how it interacts with movement. Any mechanic that prevents you from sprinting or even moving how you want to every five seconds is more than a little jarring. Moving on to the skill tree system, it just feels a bit weird. There is no hand holding in the beginning of the game and there are so many different trees with skills it is often very hard to know what to splurge your level ups into. Now if you know exactly what you're doing and what you're going for then you can build for it. But I think for most players it feels like certain abilities are always locked behind the latter tiers and you're constantly finding that when you do finally unlock them you've progressed so far in the game that they're now not super relevant. For example, if you're really into the space combat side of things, you have to pour a ton of resources into that tree to be able to pilot B tier ships, by which point you're already encountering the next tier of ships in C tier and so on. And whilst I know you can have certain companions to alleviate some of this, it feels a bit more like a band-aid on an axe wound than it does locking the guy up with the axe. I'm also not really the biggest fan of the whole inventory base building system, but I will touch more on that in the exploration section. Next, let's touch on the visuals and the performance of the game. Now, I have a fairly chunky monster of a PC that I built to both play and stream games on a single PC setup, but despite that, I found that if I did want to stream the game, I had to crank the settings down to medium, and even then, I dropped below 60 FPS when in settlements and intense situations. Building on this, when asked about the performance issues with Starfield, Todd Howard said, and I quote, It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, which honestly did not sit well with me or anyone else else apparently. Why release the game to the masses when the majority of the masses can't even run the game properly due to poor optimization? And whilst I have not played on console, the news around the release was that it didn't really run very well on Xbox either, although there have been a few patches since which claim to have improved performance somewhat. Despite this, what I will say is that when playing off stream on higher settings, the game looks phenomenal. You can really tell that the developers poured a ton of time into making the environments look truly beautiful and I genuinely found myself just taking in the scenery from time to time. There are a ton of different environments from barren wasteland planets, frozen over planets, moons and a number of different settings within areas of civilization. And on that note, let's start diving into these civilizations, the story and the RPG elements. Despite what you may think of Bethesda, I think we can all agree that they've definitely put out some absolute bangers. And I firmly believe that the storytelling, RPG elements and companions are what have made Bethesda the title so special to many. With that in mind, I was very excited to get stuck into Starfield and all it had to offer. And whilst I was definitely not disappointed, I wasn't exactly thrilled with what I found either. I put hundreds and hundreds of hours into Skyrim back in the day, completing all and every quest, including the shitty one collecting Crimson Ninru in the dark. However, in Starfield, I actually found it pretty tough to get truly invested in any of the storylines. Whilst the main storyline did absolutely pique my interest and I really enjoyed the Crimson Fleet questline, I found it really hard to care about any any of the side quests or even those related to your companions and constellation. Whilst none of the companions outright annoyed me, I didn't really get all that attached to them either, apart from Vasco. But maybe that says a lot, that the one companion that I loved was a robot. I found myself not wanting to pick the game back up due to a lack of enthusiasm and ended up stopping it around the 40 hours mark. Again, I really wish I was more invested as much of the world building is really, really good. The cities and worlds look so incredible and have so much depth to them. You could easily spend hours just exploring every small detail each settlement had to offer, but the game doesn't really incentivize or reward you to do so. 
Many of the random interactions with NPCs in space and in settlements were interesting to begin with. It just got a little stale really quickly. I'm also super conscious of the fact that I was still in school when Skyrim drops. Nowadays, I don't have nearly as much free time as an adult as I did back then, so don't really want to pour a ton of time into something for the sake of it. And spending more and more hours in the hope that the game would pick up the pace felt like a bit of a chore. Next, I really want to touch on the exploration and the combat. Combat I'll break down into two subcategories, on-planet and off-planet. On-planet, it's nothing all that special. There are a variety of different weapons with different elemental or effect qualities to them, but nothing all that out of the ordinary. Whilst the gunplay actually did feel really good, it suffered somewhat from that clunk that all Bethesda games seem to have that I mentioned earlier. But to summarize, not bad at all, just nothing to write home about. Off-planet though, I found this to be a different story. I adored No Man's Sky once it was was finally playable and I really enjoyed the combat system in that game. Likewise, I really enjoyed the ship combat in Starfield. Flying felt super intuitive and I'd find myself getting really invested in the dogfights, actively seeking them out in every star system that I could visit. However, to begin with, I actually despised the power allocation system, but I think that was just because I have a smooth little monkey brain. I did like the fact that I had to think about shifting my power allocation around to different systems when all I wanted to do was go pew pew. After a little time though, it felt more intuitive and now I don't really love Love it or hate it it's just there and whilst this is my experience with it i've seen some not so happy chappies online calling the starfield space combat system remarkably shallow which i think is both fair and an unfair comment if you're comparing it to other RPG titles, I think it's actually sufficiently in depth. But if you're comparing it to a space exploration or a space combat game, then yeah, of course it's shallow. Which brings me to my next and possibly most contentious point, the exploration itself. I think the marketing team for Starfield actually did the game real dirty. It was marketed as this amazing open world, super expansive space game with over a thousand planets to explore and build bases on. But that's not really true at all. This game is a good RPG set in space not a game built for exploration. A lot of the planets are vastly desolate and the travel between them is remarkably shit. Starfield was marketed as a game without loading screens, but that's a lie if you consider fast travel animations as loading screens. And whilst there is a pretty cool and in-depth ship builder allowing for some awesome customization, you can't actually do a lot with the ship. It's more of a really expensive fast travel backpack than it is a vessel for exploration, which is a real shame. And speaking of the inventory, I found it really hard on my adventures to tell what I actually should and shouldn't pick up and nine times out of ten I just end up over encumbered and with the base building I feel like there wasn't really an incentive to build outposts and when the game forced you to actually build one it was a little off kilter and back to my earlier point knowing exactly what resources you needed was super unintuitive leading to more confusion when looting during your adventures and finally the price tag if you have xbox game pass then nice it's free get stuck in but if you're getting the game on steam it's 60 pounds which i know isn't actually all that uncommon i just don't like it in summary is starfield a good game yeah i guess is it the amazing game we all hoped it would be no not really if you're looking for some next level space exploration with some tight space combat, then I'd advise something else like No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous or EVE if you're really into it. If you're looking for an amazing RPG experience, it's actually a solidly decent pick, but I'd pick something like Baldur's Gate 3 in the same price tag, and I have a video coming on that soon if you want to know more. Now I know it sounds like I've done nothing but shit on Starfield, and I'm sure many of you think that with 40 hours I've not really given it a good enough go, but if you need to pour 60 plus hours into something before it gets good, that's so much time you could be doing something else or playing a better game with that said if you have game pass give it a go yourself and let me know your thoughts but for 60 pounds i think it could be money better spent but until next time like and sub if you enjoyed check out these other videos on screen and much love